Clouds gather, Kislevites, and like the eternal winter of the motherland, we bring the storm! We bring the storm indeed. Welcome on back everyone to part 15 of our Mother Estonkia Immortal Empires campaign. In today's episode, we are here for the fall of Hexawaddle. Uh, the capital city of the Elizardmen is under siege by all sorts of creepy critters from the woods. We've got bats flying at overhead to disrupt the javelins and any other missile troops we might have fighting in the wings while our frostworm and other big Ming beasties get to ripping apart the front gate. Who but the frostworm? Though there's so many smaller things in the woods here, they might get each other's way. Icy freeze dropping down from our ice switch, and I do note there's something a little bit different here. These are the lowest tier towers. What I was fighting was max tier laser towers, and they were dealing all of the damage. Uh, so these towers are, for some reason, very different. They, these are only dealing 70 damage instead of 500, so we'll have to keep that in mind. I've also sent the spiders round wide to nibble on those gates and try to get them to send some troops wide, as well as the bears from the other side to do the same. See how much of their army we can split apart here. Drop on the hag magic about to go down. Vengeance of the spirits, such a great spell, especially when the Saurus are doing such a good job at dodging. We guess we deactivated the spell there, Kashka. The Saurus are doing a great job dodging our other spells, so. So that is just a immediate cast and down. It's gonna be a little bit more effective for us. Currently, the defenders just kind of moving their troops around, not really taking any kind of defensive line. I guess she just decided to not cast that spell at all. That's another. This is a super bad desync here. Unfortunate. We'll have a good time all the same. Spirit of Vengeance finally popping down now. Acro pros pecking and annoying all of the Saurus, getting them to accidentally punch themselves in the face. Great spell. Her health was a down to about here by now because of the laser cannon shots. That's why she's directly next to the, the tower now. Gate's about to bust open due to the Frostworm's might. We're now just going to consolidate the rest of our, our fast movers and smashers to uh, break through these gates here. Sauras are preparing to meet us. Those gates are going to go open very soon, but then I've the bats took a lot of damage fighting the enemy Sauras warriors. Now they're just going to move around and look for those already weakened javelin warriors to destroy. The gates flying open. Now all are sent on in. Even and down, guys. There they go. Comet of Cassandora completely missing, thankfully. Would have been a nasty cast. Frostworm is slithering on into the front line of javelins there and doing all of the good damage. Nothing you'd see out of something like a skull crusher, but we'll take it. Especially with what is coming in behind. Another Vengeance of Spirits drops this time, hitting absolutely nothing. Into the woods, start the fight off. A little bit of wind blast going through our Echo Boys. Demons in the woods are going to care about wind very little. Ripping apart the swords, we've got the normal feral bears in there now. Need a little bit of assistance as they're fighting spear riders by themselves. The sleds are going to come crashing in now. Their idea to pull through and set up here into the bottom portion. Oh, I'll admit they have come in a little bit too soon. That's moving to avoid the elite source on the other side who are suffering from agony succession. Temple Guard on this side as well. 
nothing on our army is really going to like fighting those temple guards. We're going to try to keep them well away from us at all costs. With the healing magic blasting on through our lines, the blessed goulash. We're now moving in a gigantic evil blob of goo. One of the sleds was defeated while fighting the Sora Spears, but they replenish in about a turn all the same if you only lose the one, so... Definitely not that big a deal for us. Okay, so gets the Javelin Boy's attention and then it retreats back to friendly territory, that way we can get the spiders and everything else to nibble on the bits. All the arrow goes flying. Taking out as many of the Temple Guard as we can. Yeah, the knee sink has gotten pretty aggressive here at this point. But we'll still enjoy it all the same. The ball that is that blob of uh, our strongest heavy hitters is destroying that group. We've got sleds in here working with Things in the Woods to work their way through the Saurus and Umbakari combo. Bones broken. Better get those rifles firing. Ooh, a little bit of a PowerPoint presentation. We'll sweep on out to the uh, outskirts here and see how things are going. Got the bats surrounding Stegadon and they just get blended. That makes sense. Bats don't tend to fare very well in a fight against big, heavily armored dinos. But with the retreat of the captain, the rest of the army goes ahead and flees for the hills. A little bit of a messy battle there that didn't exactly line up with what exactly happened, but you'll see here in the most battle an awesome breaking of Hexawaddle. And just like that, the capital of Hexawaddle falls to Kislev. Should have done a better job defending. Now we could sack the capital for even more gold and a lot more spirit essence. We've got a ton right now. Let's just go ahead and loot and claim Hexawaddle as is. And this we'll end up giving over to the Jade Court as well. I don't feel like claiming any land that is outside of frozen territory or is in the uh, orange, unpleasant climate. Our boy, though, is now a Reptilian Ravager. We are going to be giving up the... I'm pretty sure there's a monument here. The Stellar Pyramids of the Southern Skies. Which, actually, I think we should keep. Although if we do, then we're going to be dealing with Jade Court for sure, so let's, we will give this one on over. We'll stay for a few turns to benefit from the gold and kind of dismantle a couple of these oblast moots and things. My volume is far too loud, i got to turn it down just a quick... Exploding my eardrums there. Okay, we will go for Woodland Ambusher and Tall's Fury for Urkulisk, and then finish off his red line afterwards. Kashka. We'll make you one with nature so we can see a little bit further. Commander of the soldiery. And then four. Madame Mercilis will upgrade a hailstorm and then finish up her magic tree there, getting on towards the more elite spells like Blizzard. Mara, you're out being a specialist. Max that on out, so 6% more action at success chance, and then 40% less hero action cost, which is pretty nice. Stuff. Sambalbe. So we have now recruited on in Alexei Goyevich here in the oh, Rune yeah. Shard. Uh, since it is uh, where our, our most elite troopers we can recruit are at, uh, so what we need to do is grab a couple of one turn recruitment lads. Let's go for a couple of Akshina crossbows. One of the things that are going to take only a single turn. So we'll grab an additional Frostworm. And then probably some normal bears. A couple of normal bears. And then we'll go for Griffin Legion and things once we actually have dealt with the Lizard Menace. Because we are likely now going to get attacked at the Petrified Forest or Iron Spike. And either one, we are not going to have a good time defending. So let's 
Make sure we are not... We'll go ahead and kick this construction out of the Petrified Forest, just in case they do manage to attack. And then Iron Spike is already quite damaged, so we're likely to lose this one. Unfortunate, but not a lot we can do about it for now. As far as our provinces that need upgrading, let's go ahead and take Frog's Tanner's Guild up to the next tier. On this side of the world, Frog is likely to invade us quite soon. So let's go ahead and kick out this building in Volksgrad. And maybe even the Merchant Traders as well. Don't have a lot of time, that's kind of the issue. Stalton has defeated the invaders here at Erengrad, but we can't quite reach Norden. Denied. We do need to take back Alexandrinov as well for I am this unique building. Invaders of Erengrad are completely intact, so let's move Best. across the sea here and threaten both Alexandrinov and a Norden. Me. Perfect. If the Ice Court decides to attack either one, we can then change our target, depending. And so we have nothing really else we can we can do for the turn. Is there any heroes that we can recruit on in? In fact, there is Ice Court. Activate our new Frost Maiden, Ursula. And we can get Mishka back on in, so we'll go ahead and summon you here in the Bleak Coast. Probably been smarter to be over here towards our, our hero, but that's fine. And then we can get a couple more Patriarchs as well, so let's come on back over towards Kislev proper. And we should be able to recruit Patriarchs as long as we're in the right spot, so we've got the Judicator Anton and Vlasi the Vanguard. Hopefully we can afford them for a couple turns, but even if not, I'm still going to recruit them. I go ahead and steal some tech here from Foundry of Bones. A couple of Marauders should be easy to yoink away some goodies from. Although how smart we're going to get from them is going to be probably pretty suspect. Igior, we've got so many Patriarchs running around. Uh, we'll have you come and join up with Castalton. There's no reason not to have an additional one. Boy's on a bear as well, so he's going to be very useful. Appleberg is needing to be repaired. Uh, Isabella out there being a nuisance. And then over at the Ziggurat of Dawn, let's go ahead and hand this over to the Jade Court as well. Come, rest. You I'll give you Ziggurat you. of Dawn and you'll give me all of your gold. This is an excellent uh, deal we have worked out here. Quite the success of diplomatic art. Oh, indeed, you take a trashy town and I get some gold. Works for me. Protector of the realm. Mortalo is really looking to make friends. Let's do it. Welcome to Fair Britonia, Commoner. Fair Britonia is looking a little bit moist. I concur. This will be an alliance worthy of the legends. And we can only hope. Next turn we'll likely be able to get the defensive alliance up with them, so. Lord of Britonia. Perfect. I'm not gonna even try to make a alliance with Sir, uh, Sir John Earweld here. He's about to meet his maker. So, and with all of our gold, we can just go ahead and get a defensive alliance with the Urson Revivalist. Oh, yes. 13,000. I mean, let's let's fund Kislev's... He's destroying the North. Well done, Boris. Urson is pleased with you. The Motherland is pleased with you. Got the gallows tree. The boy is out here destroying chaos. Oh, well, there's a random vestige of Throg deep in his mountains, which is kind of confusing. Where is their main provincial capital? Burning Monolith is going to be one. Oh, it's actually a minor settlement, really. I believe the Howling Citadel should be. So you've already dealt with the Ever Chosen, have you? This is a feat I haven't seen in a single one of my campaigns. Boris is never this powerful. Awesome. That'll work. It was half of our gold, but now we have a very powerful ally. 
we skip on through, ignore our outposts in Nordland. And then we shall find out what some Balbe is up to. Bring it, you big toad. It is the cold that makes you shiver. Not myself. Boris is scared of neither. Join his war with the disciples of Ashut for 1500. You're willing to give me more money than that, I know it. How about 1900? Okay, maybe not. What about 1750? Okay, fine. Haggling is not going well. We can give it a little bit more. We'll take 1650. After you took all of our gold last turn, what'd you do with all that? Oh no, our ally has been attacked by Wintertooth. Uh, well, we enter war on the side of our ally. Looks like this is what he was waiting for. Uh, the invasion of Volksgrad begins. I declare war on an ally to attack us, is what they meant to say. This is one of those weird armies that we might be able to win. We are missing a few of our... Oh, no, it's a settlement battle, too. Yeah, no, I think we have a pretty good shot at this one. Let's go ahead and agony succession on a group of the champions. Fragmenti on the boss. We do have to deal with this group of berserkers that's going to rip through our line. I mean, we even have the spirited away. 32-32 on the attack and defense. So they are almost completely on par with our cost of light dervishes. Resistance attack and leadership. Let's give the Incarnate's Wrath to our uh, Patriarch here, and then spirit it away to these lads on the dervishes. I think we can hold Throghob, but wherever Throg hits, we're going to have a, a really bad day. Oh, he's got a mammoth. Well, then. Let's also go ahead and apply a Whiff of Madness on their uh, Werekin here to hopefully deal with both Lord and Hero. We'll try our best. And the time is nigh for Kislev's shield to be tested once more. These guys have like four barreled pistols. They should be firing it so much faster than they do. Rapid fire pistols. Yeah, that would be great. In March, the Norse guns. We've got some agony succession already taking effect on their horse masters, which is perfect. Any target needs to be afflicted, I would prefer it be them. It's going to be a nasty battle for us. We've got lots of targets can just blend straight through our armored core. The Marauder Berserkers will have no trouble in a hand-to-hand -hand fight with pretty much any of our Kislevite troops. We have nothing here that can match them. We have the We're moving in quite cleverly on the side there, making sure that none of their lads can be easily shot by rifles, while the wear Cannon Berserkers move in to try to disrupt our armored Kossars on the other side there. Very good strategy. We've got our own barricade and then a couple of typical arrow towers there. They don't do a ton of damage. I do believe it actually applies the frostbitten effect so they slow down. Nope, I'm wrong. Just normal arrows, that is. Charge the Werekin. Straight into a bunch of pistols and he sends lads flying mostly in pieces. Whip the axes out and the dervishes charge in from behind there. Just to try to get a quick charge bonus and flee before they take too much damage. Two of them working together can actually deal quite a bit to uh, good old Werekin here. The rest of their forces are going to rotate round, which means we need to change our own strategy. We're going for kind of a layered defense on all the way back. This settlement has lots of ways in, so there's plenty of ways around in your defenses all the way around the settlement itself. So defending is going to be quite difficult here. Now that the Berserkers are into the fight, we need to quickly flee. Let's get blooded up by those dual axes. We're going to bring the Werekin on back into the pillbox of pistols here. 
he continues to rampage each time he actually reaches our front line. And all of our archers are not going to actually be able to do a lot to Rolf here. That's going to be the job of our pistols. Everyone with a bow is going to be going after these Marauder Berserkers who are very lightly armored. And not enjoying their new shower of arrows. Dealing with this unit and the troll, all of the uh, Berserker units and the trolls are going to be pretty much the only path to a victory here. A couple more of our Cossars get Wilt Chamberlain out of existence. Keep those pistols working, lads. Our Patriarch is going to charge in. Mace flying. And clobber him a werewolf. Good old attitude readjustment stick. We got quite, quite the hard head, but I'm sure we can beat the Orthodoxy's love into his skull in due time. We've got a pretty dastardly flanking force of skin wolves and horse masters going extremely wide while their trolls beat down this barricade. It's not looking good for the defenders of Kislev here. Your unit of trolls did charge over straight into our line of pistols, who are starting to run a little bit low on ammunition. The more models that fall, the less are able to actually regenerate, but they are going to turn and run, so we're not going to get too many more chances to hit them. Marauders take a pretty hefty bit of damage there coming on in. Got plenty more people to convert, or else. Buildings are indeed under attack, but now the Horse Masters have made it on in, so our spearmen need to quickly readjust. Send some arrows their way. Javelins come back and return fire, we lose a few. Thankfully, they do try to focus fire like one or two targets, and our own archers are much better at picking apart the entire line. However, here comes a whole squad of were peoples. Ice arrows to get out of this one's hand. You boys need to get those spears up. But all archers are now going to be focus firing the skin wolves who are making very, very short work. Our poor, unfortunate cost our spears there. Hold the line as long as you can, lads. And their own general has now made it into the fray on his war mammoth. He's going to be a uh, pretty massive threat. Each little swing of those tusks, you'll see. He can chunk this health bar go away. He's not even really doing anything. Our Patriarch George is back in to try to deal with the enemy Weirkin. One more bump can see him into the afterlife. He managed to land it. Good grief, seeing that many Cossars being blended apart is always a sad day. Over on the other side is not a lot better as they have smashed, the trolls have smashed their way through our barricade and now happily ripping apart our spearmen. Point blank arrow shots cannot feel good, but they're gonna go ahead and sub out and let the angry gingers stride forth. Tired of being removed from all the Disney movies, they are now getting their revenge upon the Frozen Kingdom. These guys will make incredibly short work of our poor Cossars. Skin wolves have been weathered. We're not going to say fairly well because there's only like 10, there's 38 of these guys left. Uh, but they, they didn't immediately all die. So those that survive will remember this day. Probably every time they close their eyes. Chief up here doing absolutely nothing. I'd love to see a little bit of a change this in this uh, animation where kind of similar to our War Shrine. Double clobber. On the war shrine, the guy will kind of jump down on the side and swing his axe or his uh, scepter or what have you. It'd be great to see the Marauder Chieftains doing the same as they're just kind of sitting there and happily riding along on their mammoth. Chieftain fleeing for the hills. We've almost got him down. He takes a great fall. Evil Norsk and Hannibal is no more. On the 
high ground, though, or hardcore surviving, because the fights are being bashed apart by a combination of Frosty and Stone Troll. They're gonna let fly a Hailstorm of Arrows each time, but there's, there's too much armor and too much regeneration here for that to really matter much. My R blood is popping across the field, which is a really bad, really bad sign. I actually like to see a little bit of a change. These broader pikemen where they're they act act more like a pikeman, and their spear is like four times the length of the Kossar spears. We'll give them a little bit of a stat boost to match. Still do have quite a few soldiers left, but as none of these guys have much ammunition left. Uh, they're mostly just blood for the blood god. We will happily watch. And Fair Terra, I think, is running low on its, uh... And there he goes. Binding didn't last that long, sadly, and now it's just the lads. They're gonna be quite horrified to figure that out. As it is a pretty much a horror show up here on the, the top portion. That guy, poor guy, he's... <laughs> That was such a bad time, he thought he had an arrow. Two of them are a little bit clever, they're gonna run for the hills. We take up arms. Uh, they're taking up your arms and beating you to death with them. Didn't have time to really put in any towers. And the only one we have is in this position, which will be dragged down by the enemy javelins. Unfortunately. We get to watch my poor Karsars charge honorably into combat. True horror of a chaos invasion. As you would normally just have Karsars and maybe armored Karsars, kind of similar to this, fitting the settlement. Most of the time, your defending garrisons stand no chance to marauding forces, no matter how kind of small they might seem. Far outclass them in hatred and fighting potential. Of course, having a few trolls never hurts. Our own patriarch has already fallen. Our lads are breaking and those that survive are going to flee for the hills. We will speak of this day and we'll, we'll be back with vengeance in our hearts. And try as we might, we were unable to hold the line against Trigird of the Storm Ravens. We slay himself, his Skidwolf Werekin, and one of his uh, broader champions, but everyone else that is important gets to survive, so hopefully we can turn it back around with Stalton and deal with these guys in time. And Throg moves on to Volksgrad, so we lose two settlements right off the bat. Love when he declares war on Kislev and then attacks us instead. Hearts of ice. And we have ourselves a new event, Face Off. The horrified farmers of Prague have awoken to find that every ear of grain bears the miniaturized face of a lowing beast, and that their cattle are now blank, faceless nightmares. A vile mutation afflicts the cursed city once more. Oh wow, how exciting. Food is too precious in Prague to even waste this monstrously spoiled harvest. Perhaps it may be even a boon to sorcery, though who knows what horror we will have to invite across our threshold. Yeah, let's not eat mutated corn, burn it all, or find the source. Let's go ahead and find the source, grab ourselves a brass cleaver. Search the fields and barns, scour the grain silos and troughs, comb the wells and riverbeds. Sorceress artifact is responsible for this corruption. It must be ours. We can use it to destroy. Okay, now with uh, losing two of our settlements here, we are now down in the negative income. Time to get some violence afoot. Looks like Kislev hid from our enemies as well, which is also lovely. You dragged us into a war and then hid in the corners. Renovating the vast abandoned wings of the Boca Palace will provide additional accommodation to barrack many rotas of loyal soldiers. Relief Column's Commandment, additional 
negative 5% your recruitment cost. Now we're on our way to the Festival of Urza for 10% more research rate. Mission issued, gain a substantial income, which we have quite a ways to complete. We've got the Coven's Curse Mark, which we have the upgraded version of this. Answer is no. Alright. Stamping out Festus the Leech Lord permanently would be a very good idea. Especially since Zarina Katarina is about to claim my castle back. So we're going to come on in with Dalton. Take Alexandrov back for Kislev. On one step backwards. Go ahead and give Alexandrov an upgrade. Thankfully, we do have a little bit of gold to work with here. Under his replenishment. Let's instead see if there's any uh, lads that Throg is rolling with. We're going to try to wound him. Joggin, Operation, take out that werewolf. Operation Critical Failure. At least we don't have to pay for you anymore. Melitza, your turn. You can't wound him because he's now a champion. We need to defend Prague. People are ill-treated. Ill this is not a very good defense force for what's coming. We at least have some quarrelers, which I'm very happy about. And a couple of blasting charge miners. Nostis Aznabeev. Really? He's a Kislevite, uh, white dwarf. Knowledge taken for greater good. At least take the extra technology here. Trading decision for the ice court. We'll go ahead and claim a Maiden of Tempest. Anyone we can afflict with a curse mark? Someone needs it. Oh, hello, Vlad. He just shook off his last one. Now we're down to only needing to consume 36 more Spirit Essence for the final two battles. And we have completed this very quick. 30, 60 turns in almost? I'm here for it. Kevin. Let's go ahead and wipe out Vlad. This should be an easy auto-resolve. Noble of the Oblast. Noble of the Oblast. Let's go secondary point into Penumbral Pendulum. And then move to... Wipe out Champion the, the Von Karsteins. Oh, we've got to go around? Oh, I thought we could just go across the river there. Light the heart fire. That's a little bit annoying. He's definitely not going to uh, stick around for that fight. Lucia, you move over back towards Alexandrinov, but do so while knocking out Emmanuel as well. Such boys and 12% chance to do a good thing. Let's see. No, not, not today. For failure. I think you should. We will grab a couple of the, uh, more Agony Succession, just replenish what we used there the last turn. Spirited Away is not really all that great after using it a couple times a year, even though we get a great big Spirit Bear. It gets a couple attacks. Since it's so kind of cumbersome and sluggish, it doesn't actually swing that often. It's really not all that great. Let's go with Madness, and then... A couple unburdened steps, followed by a gate of thorns. And like that. Oh, oh, I see. We need to consume a 95 more spirit essence. I got mixed up. Either way, we're very close. Should be about able to use the Jinx land again so we can teleport an army over to Cathay. Just as you all have been asking for, it may be Vlad we send over to Cathay. Oh, never mind. I take it back. We can take Throg and just chuck him as far away as possible. Let the Cathayans deal with the, the Troll King. I think that's going to be our call. For Mama Stanky. Looks like from here, best call is going to be to move on a Lorelorn Forest and claim ourselves another magical forest. Still, their futures. Should give us a lot more essence each turn, too. We're getting, looks like, I think three from each forest. So, three if you add two additional. They will be better. We'll auto resolve that one. Occupy as is. As well for a time. For a time. Is coming. Then we'll go ahead and take Power of the Church here to eliminate all of that undivided corruption as fast as we can. 
dismantle the church building, but put in the roadhouse. And we'll replace this with uh, just a money-making market. Just an old woman. Renowned and feared on a stonky to drop that upkeep by 8%. And then we'll switch back around and kind of finish off her... I guess we gotta decide between her spellbook or quartermaster for even further upkeep production. She's a pretty elite army, so any reduction in cost is gonna be pretty nice. You get another hag witch back into this, this squad over here. Arxamaz and her gig. Probably not a bad idea. We'll upgrade the Kislevite colony here in Middenstag. Before I do though, let's make sure. Nothing can be upgraded over here in Illustria. Sambalbe so Bay has come on back towards the Fallen Gates. We've got Mazda Mundizel and a Fass all over here. Oh good grief, that is all of the Saurus. I think we can do some pretty good damage to these Saurus too. Commander of the soldiers. I don't really care about holding Hexawaddle that bad, so if we can get aggressive towards Sambalbe. He has neglected... No, he, never mind. He's got the Plateau of the Fallen Gates. Gives you three Temple Guard, which are... There we go. Fortunate set of defenders there. Regina, then we gotta try our, our might, though. The Drugina aggressively pushed towards the Fallen Gates. Without question. In fact, we can do a little bit of sneakiness where we go into ambush stance here. Guile. But I still don't really think we will win that battle with 100% certainty. So what I'm going to now do is go talk to the Jade Court a little bit more and offer them Hexawaddle. Or whatever gold you have left. Quite the success. I agree. We are best of buds. He doesn't even know he's being used as a speed bump. That's where you put your uh, outpost? Fools. Leader of Kislev's now, if we can bring Urkalisk, I want to keep him in the Jade Court territory, so hopefully Let it passes by their turn and we get the replenishment. I think that's how it'll work. But if not, Hexawaddle will come through and be a big issue here. So you know what? We'll, we'll come on into this territory. It's only a 55% chance to succeed, though. Go is caution. Oh, yeah. Alexi, let's get you this one that has undead. Ishka, come find out. I demand absolute loyalty. Two more Akshina. I deserve a lot. And we'll, we'll go ahead and handle the lovely island here next turn. I think five Akshina is a good good number. You can't necessarily afford them, though, as I fill in our ranks. Never Boy, it's a tough call. We will leave this for now. Let's make sure all of our upgrades are well in order. Kislev's defense is five. Just got some time to wait on our, our growth, then. Wolven District. Merchant Guild Hall. We've got a ton of gold coming in, but we've got also a lot of a lot of very powerful armies. Alright, we'll go ahead and give you Gust Flu a true flight for your cannons. A brass cleaver and an iron curse icon for some items. Initiate drops corruption further. Tax Collector increases our income. Okay. Got just Nestor there that needs a little bit more skill point passing out. And we'll give him Impassion. Defend himself a bit better. Of the motherland. Let's you stay here in the Moon Shard. Bow to me. Skip on past you. Patriarch of Kislev. Have our Patriarch then. Will destroy. So we might as well weaken their replenishment. 
They are in friendly territory or foreign territory, but if they decide to claim Sarkov, then it'll stop them from plunging. Which is great. Jump to our myriad heroes that haven't been moved. Guide me, spirits. Let's scoop behind Wei Jin here and find where Village is hiding. Red Fortress is all he has claimed. Not a very ambitious lord. Repair what was damaged during Telebheim. Upgrades in Karak Hirn. Probably a good call. Karak Adrin as well. Let's not do too many more outpost upgrades just because... 6,000, we've got that negative that we're dealing with still. Skip through. Nothing else to be done in the Witch's Hut for this turn, and that will be our turn. Age and wisdom do not make me a monster. What I do that. Hello, Belagar. Join war against Clan Scryer for 1800. So we shall. I've seen worse trades. Now Throg's big dumb butt moves to attack Throg. Oh, we can just defend it with auto resolve? You poor fool. See you later. And we'll pardon those captives when he runs on away. Whatever army he has left, I'm gonna send off. Argwylan and Turgovon become one. Awesome to see. What else working together? State scholarship. Officially, the Ice Court only accepts young women of noble lineage, for only they deserve its timeless wisdom. We'll try this one more time. Exceptions are sometimes made, though none may talk of it. When a farmer beseeches the court, offering a thousand saddlebags of bloodstained gold, his daughter is accepted without question. Interesting. So state, uh, the state scholarship is slaying your enemies. Ice Court training cost, minus 50%. Which would be great if we had a few more options. Need a couple more followers for defeating Throg, and let's just go ahead and pick him up. And send him over, let's say, to the jungles of Chion in Cathay. Enjoy your trip. We'll zoom to the settlement, and then... Like that, Throg disappears. Only to be plopped into the middle of Cathay. Enjoy the tree people here. Whoa! Cathe has fallen. The northern provinces have been pushed all the way down to the south. That is crazy. She's holding... Actually, she's got a weird split empire here. Maybe all the way down the coast. Well, we might need to get over there and help out quite soon, then. Mother of Stonkia. Fender of all. I like this. Kevin should be able to karate chop Vlad. He knew he couldn't escape. I think we pushed him closer to Eckert, so we have some reinforcements, maybe? No, no reinforcements, but a decisive win. Time to die. 61 lost, and we'll just go ahead and take the extra replenishment. Victory makes us stronger. Indeed. Undeath descendant. Down, but probably not out, as you can, cannot really kill what doesn't truly live. Less wound recovery time for Gavin. Rock takes the vampire through the wall and become has become a vampire himself. I guess now we move aggressively towards Tempelhof. We have done so much damage, I hope the Empire can actually start holding their own territories now so we can get back to defending Kislev. This land is ours. We'll upgrade Talibheim, put in the Woodsman's Hut in Appleberg there. Champion of Kislev. Stand your ground, so let's go ahead and continue down his gold line. So let's go, I would say. More armor. Say hag at your peril. Stand your ground on her as well, so we'll go ahead and grab. Well, again, that's only for Zargard and things. So we won't. Is triumphant. triumphant. Let's go Deadly Blade for the Golden Knight. Guardian of the Land. 
don't have any more goodies that you that can equip. Used. So we'll go ahead and come on into... Oh, we've got a unique skill, Eagle Eye, for more scouting. Magistrate for even more income boosted and then less construction cost. Scholar for more technology. Steel rate and research rate by 3%. Champion of the Ice Guard. Or Handmaiden of the Ice Queen. Let's go Scholar. Because money. We'll increase mobility there with Ulrika, then grab spread control and continue down the her, her magic line. Noble of the Oblast. Awesome. So growth is great or building income. Economist works much further into the late game than the growth does. We demand due respect. We demand due respect. So earn it. I'm really disappointed that the Empire has not just stamped them out. I have dealt with so many of their large armies, you better capitalize on our momentum a little bit. So we'll have a stonk ya then. How much attrition are we even going to take? I'm betting it's going to be next to zero, so let's get real aggressive. Keep up with my sled. Find out first, can't we? Mother's work. Oh yeah, it's next to nothing. So we'll get real aggressive and threaten both Dieterschaffen and the Salzenmund. Yes, of course, it has been a very, very we'll give ourselves a few more agony succession while she talks about how long her life has been. Grab those unburdened steps. I think we'll grab an Ember Dread this time as well, and then dispute it away. Or in case of emergency. Like that, 12 more Spirit Essence, and then we can use the Recreant Spirit. So, Urkalisk's ambush was not successful, but Mazda Mundi and his armies have all split up, and now we can hunt down some Malbe. Respect my position. Boy's about to respect our position. She's a Hag Witch of Hags. Ooh, but Wildkeeper is so good. Stock for things in the woods, vigor loss reduction for all of the uh, critters. Wild Keeper it is for our Hag Witch of Hags. The wrath of now we slaughter some Balme. Where are you going, fool? Fight for Your Mother doom approaches. Your victory with high casualties. Let's have ourselves one more battle here. I am going to apply. I think just about nothing here. No blessings, no curses. We will fight with our own strength. Make sure Urkalisk's shots are magical. Help bring down this big magical toad and war. This poor toad is about to find out just how vengeful the motherland can be. We are going to kind of have a setup where we've got all of our bears up front, followed very closely by things in the woods, and then war sleds behind them following. Let it just to smash in and destroy everything. That's on distraction duty and on harassment if uh, enemy enemies turn their backs. Things in the woods have been spotted. Stonkia is going without well, a Stonkia, but our uh, normal hag witch you know, let loose a blast of vengeance of spirits there. Paul's arrow unleashed upon the Croxagore in the back line. Damages too, but none fall. They've tasted their own blood now and are probably extra angry. Good old riflemen start to shred apart the red crests up front. Now the charge is on them. Brave but foolhardy. Bears pouring down with normal stings. Our things in the woods are a little bit outclassed here, so we've got healing goulash blasting on in, and we'll have the spiders. That's working together to try to drag down these uh, cold ones. They're not quite as dangerous as they could be. Uh, directly behind them there is the power fist crocs gore that are fighting our spiders and are bashing them apart. 
They're fighting for us. It is very wasted here, though, because they are extremely armor-piercing. I mean, better serve in dealing with the Stonky or our bears. Or Mage Priest has been isolated from his main forces and our bears and things in the woods. I felt quickly moving in. This is actually a fairly fast battle here. Some bottle made his hordes. We remember every kiss the bite slain and we'll get you back in blood. Not after getting body slammed first by the Croxagor. Get out of there, lads. Their rifle's gonna keep singing. And we see the enemy white flag go up. The Slan Mage Priest is gonna beg for mercy. Osdemundi is next. Proper punishment for the Lizardmen has been meted out. 45 fall in the fighting, and we gave ourselves a new banner of Eternal Flame. We'll give this to probably one of our bad teams. Give them some fiery bad attacks. So we'll go ahead and grab the additional replenishment as well. And onward towards reclaiming Sildurator. A whole bunch of goodies for winning that one, and we'll just move right on through. Reclaim our lost lands. You will fall! Beautiful. And like that, that is going to be all the time I have got for today. Thank you all so much for stopping by today's Mother of Stonkia episode. If you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like for the like god and a sub for the sub throne. See you all in the next one.